All right, so here's a question. When was the last time you've gone outside and really just looked up at the stars? It's been a while, right? Well, the perfect setting for stargazing would be a clear night and being away from all the big city lights. And at times, we can clearly see Starlink satellite constellations. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk wants to provide internet to anywhere in the world from those satellites. And as more companies look to get into the high-speed internet game, more constellations could be coming. But what does that all mean for viewing the night sky? This week's Space Curious podcast talks about satellite constellations. Podcast host and new six space expert Emily Speck joins us now. And Emily, first of all, welcome. Thanks for being here. And for folks who aren't sure exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about satellite constellations, explain what we mean by that phrase. So when we're talking about a satellite constellation, that means a, a group of or a fleet of satellites, if you will. And um, this week, when we're talking about constellations, we're talking about like Starlink and OneWeb and eventually Amazon. They want to launch thousands of satellites to create a space-based internet. So so far, SpaceX is way ahead in the game. They have more than 700 in orbit, and uh, sometimes when you look up, you can see them in the night sky. This is all to benefit humanity to create internet and remote places, but you know it does come at a cost. Yeah, Emily, my husband and I were celebrating our anniversary during the pandemic. We had no place to go, so we're like, let's go to the beach. So we brought a you know, bottle of champagne, and we just like, we were stargazing, and then we thought we were just getting lucky, because we kept seeing all these shooting stars, <laughs> and then we realized they were all almost on the same track, right? So how can you tell which one's just a shooting star and the other one is... A satellite. A satellite, yeah. yeah. Um, so I have a handy app on my phone that I use sometimes to look up, and I kind of use it in this particular podcast episode to see where all the satellites are. And when you turn it up, it's it's pretty crazy. But if you're looking for a Starlink satellite, it's basically going to look kind of freaky. It's like two lights in the sky and a trail, and you'll kind of see them go by. So it looks very unnatural. So you would definitely recognize a Starlink trail. And we've gotten calls at the news desk mm -hmm. about it before, which mm -hmm. is kind of interesting. So when we talk about the trade-off here, I mean, we want to, you know, globalize internet access, but then we talk about, you know, the issues of maybe light pollution and, and things like that. So to give us a scope of what this, you know, what this means. Well, basically what this means is that now when we look up in the night sky, we might see um, a man-made object instead of, instead of a, you know, a star or a planet or something like that. And so SpaceX is working with astronomers to kind of overcome some of these issues. And I'm not just talking about hobbyist astronomers, but these are astronomers who observe asteroids and they're trying to make discoveries about the universe by, by using radio observatories. So uh, SpaceX has darkened some of the satellites. They tried mm. that. They also have for these star satellites. So uh, they're really kind of leading the way to mitigate some of these issues and hopefully the other companies follow suit. And so we're talking about space-based internet. Like who would benefit from something like this? Well, you and I would benefit from it, Julie, but so would the rest of the world. Um, basically, you know, if you live in a place right now, like a remote area, just, you know, think of all the people who don't have regular internet access. You know, during the pandemic, that's been so essential. Um, it, and it's really what makes the world run, run round, right? So this would benefit a lot of people who have not had access before because of, because of the amount of satellites and just that constant contact. So everyone would benefit from it for sure. And astronomers do see that. And they I do recognize that. And I would be completely lost if I didn't have GPS, Emily. Like, let's just be honest. Like, you know how to get anywhere anymore. Uh, I mean, this is interesting because we were just talking about the ISS almost getting hit by more space junk, right? I right. Mean, like, that came up, what, they had to use thrusters yeah. to get the ISS out of the way of space junk, which you covered in your last podcast. Yeah. And the thing we have to realize with these new satellites that are launching is that's not going to happen. We, we are going to know where these satellites are okay. at all time because they're operational. And these manufacturers have to know know when they're going to deorbit and what they're going to do when they end their life cycle. So the ISS doesn't have to worry about running into a Starlink satellite anytime soon. Good deal. That's good news. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. <laughs> and the newest episode on Starlink Constellations is live right now at clickorlando.com slash space. And those new podcast episodes come out every other Wednesday. You can also download the podcast wherever you like to usually get yours or go to clickorlando.com slash podcast. We'll see you next time, Emily.